Hello, welcome back to the channel. I just wanted to give you some updates from the CFP board. So I received a phone call last week and it was out the blue. Quite frankly, I'm kind of used to the CFP board calling me. Um, once you register for the exam, it feels like, you know, they'll call you periodically. They really want you to complete your designation. And so they just try to avail them much avail themselves as much as possible to answer any questions you may have. So I received one of these calls last week from the CFP board and essentially I was told that if I do not earn my CFP designation by July, then I have to do what is called pre-CE hours. I don't even know if that makes sense, but that's what they said to me. <laughs> So, um, or maybe they said pre-CFP CE hours, that makes more sense. But um, essentially, because I passed my exam in July of 2022, July of 2023 will be one year later. And they're saying if I don't have my CFP designation by that time, I have to do continuing education. And so it makes sense to me. I get it. They want you to keep up with your knowledge. If I had my CFP, I would still have to do those credits. So I get it. It's not a big deal. Um, I do have to do CE hours for this Series 65 anyway. So it's just another, you know, another thing to do. But I wanted to let you know because that's not something I ever read on their website. And so if you're in the same boat, I just want to make you aware of that information. Something else that um, came up for me regarding the CFP board is with experience hours. I started acquiring experience hours prior to taking the exam. And I kind of regret doing that. And so if you're trying to decide whether you're going to go the standard pathway or the apprentice pathway, um, really be clear on what you want to do, because it seems like once you start on one pathway, there's no way to transition over to the other pathway. And so because I started getting hours before um, completing my exam, those hours that I acquired were under the standard pathway. And so now... I would qualify for the apprenticeship pathway because I am working under the supervision of a CFP. Um, it's like now I'm still stuck in the standard pathway. And so I'm having to complete more hours than I would have if I had just waited and did the apprentice pathway. So that's kind of a bummer. It's not something that was really clear. I had conversations with the CFP board last year asking the same question and I never got a straight answer. Um, but now I have my answer. It's not what I wanted to, <laughs> it's not the answer I wanted, but here we are. So I think I'm still probably about a year and a half out from completing my experience hours. Um, I'm kind of on the fence about whether or not I'm going to, um, you know, try to do extra stuff to expedite those hours because like you can do um, the FPA externship and I've done that for two years. So I'm like, I guess I'll sign up for that again. Um, there's the FPA, um, it's not the retreat, but it's kind of, um, I can't think of what it's called. Um, but I know you go to Colorado for like a week and then you end up getting 600 hours. Um, I know, I think his name is Dave Yasky. He used to be over it. I don't know if he's still over it, um, but I don't know if I wanna do that or not. Um, but I'm also like, part of me is like, what's the rush? <laughs> Just, continue what you're doing and you'll get it. I don't think that it's going to really change anything for me at the moment. Um, so not to say that I don't need it, but it's not, it's not that big of a deal 
for me to just wait instead of trying to expedite it. You know, I'm working full time. So I'm, it's like, it's not like I'm not getting experience. So that's that. I just wanted to give you a heads up if you have been on the fence about which pathway to take or what you're going to do. Um, if you know you have a job lined up, I would just kind of wait until you start working full time and do the apprentice pathway. That's my two cents. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Please subscribe so I can keep you posted on what's going on, anything that I learn along the way of becoming a CFP and just, you know, becoming a financial planner in general as well. Just the whole career change has been very eye-opening. So I have a lot to share. Keep watching.